There's growing tension and infighting between Republican politicians and conservative activists. And it has to do with abortion messaging and abortion policy. While Republican candidates and lawmakers have come to terms with the lack of popularity surrounding anti-abortion policies, conservative activists are demanding that they put these issues front and center and actually do more policy wise to make abortions even more restricted in the United States. As Politico writes, some of the largest anti-abortion groups are lashing out at Mitch McConnell, the person arguably most responsible for securing the Supreme Court majority that overturned Roe, for keeping the issue at arm's length while voters in his home state considered and luckily rejected a Republican sponsored ballot initiative limiting abortion rights. In fact, Frank Cannon, who's a political strategist with an anti-abortion group says, if the argument is that this is a state issue, McConnell was not in the state arguing for the ballot initiative. By the way, that ballot initiative would have stripped their state constitution of reproductive rights. So that's what Mitch McConnell wasn't doing any campaigning on and the activists are very, very upset with him on that. But let me continue. There was nobody in the state making it clear what was at stake. The pro-life movement has to do a better job and the political element of the pro-life movement has to step up. Without that, we're going to be in trouble. Well, hey Frank, have you considered that you know various polls have indicated that the vast majority of Americans do not want to ban abortion and politicians who aren't looking to you know commit political suicide want to run away from that issue to avoid losing elections. Has that, has that ever, but that's the thing, that's the disconnect between the politics and the activists. And on the left, we've got our own flavor of that, okay? Not on yeah. the abortion issue, but on other issues. And so that, that tension continues, it's really interesting. Well, so that's the really frustrating thing about progressives or people claiming to be progressive leaders these days. Because some of our issues, most of them, the great majority of our issues are not at all like this abortion issue. So for example, they say, "Oh my God, can you believe that all the Republican politicians aren't actively supporting the 15 week law that Lindsey Graham wants to push at the national level that would ban all abortions after 15 weeks? Why don't they go out there and make a good strong case for it? And then they will convince the whole country. Now that's what we also say about $15 minimum wage. So you might say, wait, wait a minute, maybe you guys are both just as extreme. No, but wait, a there's a giant difference. That's where the mainstream media will leave it and go, you see those two extremes, right? No, but $15 minimum wage polls at around 67%. So two thirds of the country definitely wants that policy. Whereas this loses in Kansas, Kentucky, and Montana, it just happened, it, it, it lost significantly in the deep red state of Kentucky, that's why they're mad. So your proposals are deeply unpopular, mm -hmm. our proposals are deeply popular. So does that make a difference? Of course, but the thing is their proposals get put into law and ours don't. So now they, those same activists are saying, yeah, they want the Republicans to push harder rhetorically, politically, etc. But at the same time, at the end of the article, they explain, whoa, 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 no more ballot measures. Oh, so you know you're deeply unpopular. Yeah, they do. So you know that no matter what state, no matter what state, even the reddest state, if you put it to the people, they will vote in favor of keeping abortion rights. So they've now switched their tactic to you no know, capture the state legislatures as we have been and then force it down their throats because that way we don't have to ask the people and we can put our unpopular positions in place. Meanwhile, Democrats go, oh, our super popular positions, paid family leave, $15 minimum wage, etc. No, let's sit on our ass and not do anything because our donors told us to play a kabuki theater game here where we pretend to be in favor of it, but at the end, we never actually do it. So those popular provisions never get done and these things do. So uh, yeah. there's more on that, but go ahead. Anne. Well, I, I mean, I wanna give some examples of specific races where the anti-abortion activists think that the lack of anti-abortion messaging is really what led to Republican candidates losing. So. One example is Dr. Oz, and this quote really stood out to me from a so-called pro-life activist. So uh, she says this, 
Dr. Oz was as articulate on abortion as his opponent, John Fetterman, was during the debate, said Christy Hamrick with Students for Life, comparing Oz's reluctance to speak on the issue to Senator-elect John Fetterman's verbal struggles after his stroke. Running away from the pro-life issue like that really discourages a very motivated core of voters. This year wasn't the time. If uh, this year wasn't the time, if you were trying to draw a distinction uh, to back away, uh, so it wasn't popular. Banning abortion wasn't popular, and Republican candidates, including Dr. Oz, wiped their campaign websites of any mention of their anti-abortion stances because it was unpopular. In fact, it wasn't until Dr. Oz moved away from that issue and focused his campaigning on you know the crime messaging where he was finally able to close that massive lead that John Fetterman had on him. But it wasn't enough for him to end up winning, luckily. But I just love how, like, that's the thing, and Cenk says this all the time. He says, people have a difficult time seeing outside of their own perspectives. And that's really what's happening here. So these activists are endlessly steeped in this one issue, and they're surrounded by like-minded individuals who think banning abortion is the most important thing in the world, and it's very, very popular because I have surrounded myself with a bunch of people who also say that it's very, very popular to ban abortion. Yeah, but you don't live in reality. Your little activist anti-abortion bubble is not representative of what the electorate thinks. And upward of 70% of the electorate does not want to ban abortion. But they don't, they don't want to accept that. And so the tension continues, and honestly, I'm kind of enjoying it. 100%. So look, guys, first of all, if you're an anti-abortion activist, the country is just not that into you. And so <laughs> number one, there's literal votes, ballot measures in the states that you picked. We didn't pick Kansas, Kentucky, and Montana, you picked them. And you utterly failed in the reddest states there are because they don't agree with you, get it? And by the way, every poll indicates, I don't, oh, I don't believe in polls. Well, here's elections, I know what you're gonna say next. I don't believe in elections. I know, I know, you're right wingers, you want dictators, I get it. Okay, but by the way, Unlike the right wing and unlike anyone else in American politics, we're actually fair and honest. So for example, are there progressive positions or positions that people are calling progressive that are unpopular? Yes, there are. So defund the police is a disaster. It polls terribly and when someone runs on it, in the beginning in very small races they can win like city council. But once you get to the state or national level, they get annihilated because it is a very unpopular position. So now when you say this on the left, it causes blowback. There'll be people on the left that'll see this and go, how dare you? How dare you what? I'm telling you what is a reality. Those are poll numbers, those are election numbers. You can choose to stay in your own bubble and say, no, I bet defund the police polls at 98% and I'm gonna run my campaign on it. Have at it, Hoss. It's not gonna matter because you're not gonna win. And so you can get super mad at me but that's a reality. For these anti-abortion people, nobody ever tells them the truth. Because remember, they live in a bubble filled with nothing but lies. They've been lying the whole time about, oh my God, the Democrats are gonna uh, uh, have abortions up and through birth. Well, I mean, if you guys are built your whole campaign on lies, of course you're not gonna know what reality is, right? Nobody says that people should be allowed to get abortion. For sure, after birth abortion is the- It's called murder, <laughs> yeah, that's actual If you murder. believe that there's such a thing, you're so beyond help. No, but you know what's okay. amazing, Cenk? In this political piece, the activists say that banning abortion within 15 weeks or at 15 weeks doesn't go far enough because they acknowledge that the vast majority of abortions happened in the first trimester. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, I just love it because for their propaganda, they use that lie about after birth abortions and they yeah. make it seem as though like all oh, actual, like healthy living, breathing babies are being aborted. No, that's not what's happening. They know, I, I, their admission in this piece makes it abundantly clear that they know that the vast majority of abortions happen in the first trimester. No, but remember guys, literally everything the anti-abortion movement has done is predicated on lies. Oh, Democrats are killing babies. They will set up entire clinics pretending to be doctors wearing white lab coats. We've covered it before. You can read the articles, you can watch our videos. Crisis pregnancy centers. Crisis pregnancy centers. There's, oh, they're all across the country, there's hundreds of them. right? You walk in, you're thinking you're talking to a doctor. No, they're all liars, none of them are doctors. 
None of them are in the medical field at all. And they feed you a bunch of lies about if you have abortion, you're gonna get breast cancer later or whatever weird made up things that they do. And then they're shocked to find out that their version of reality wasn't real at all. Of course, you built your entire position on lies, it's not surprising. And so, and then finally I come back to, look, if you choose to have unpopular positions, you will lose elections, that's how democracy works. And you could think like, for example, if you're a prison abolitionist on the left, you could think my position is awesome. I'm positive of it and I'm positive that I can convince everyone that they, that everybody's gonna be better off if there are no prisons at all and we just let everybody go, okay? Have at it, Hoss, go for it, I believe in a free country. But you're not gonna convince people of that and it's just not gonna work. Yep. So stay in your own bubble if you want, that's your choice. But understand, you're definitely in a bubble and, and and by the way, the mainstream media and mainstream politicians in the biggest bubble of all. Oh Yeah, paid family leave and Social Security and Medicare, I bet they're not popular at all. We should cut those things. We should cut everything that helps the American people. Oh, Americans love it when you give it to defense contractors, trillions of dollars at a time. They're in the biggest lying bubble of all, just keep it real. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.